everyone. It's 11 o'clock here in Madison, so we're going to get started. Thank you everyone for joining us today for our webinar. My name is Jackie Carville, and I'll be coordinating the webinar today. I'm here with Carrie Phillips, who will be going over several of our DNA Star Cloud capabilities as applied to sequence assembly and analysis. You may have noticed that your phone has been muted. However, we do encourage you to ask questions along the way. To ask a question, simply type it into the chat dialog and select Send to Host. I will then direct these questions to Carrie to be answered to the whole group. If you need any assistance or have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to send a chat message to me, email me at webinars at dnastar.com, or tweet us at the Twitter handle at dnastarinc. Additionally, we will be offering a giveaway at the end of the webinar today, so stay tuned to learn how you can obtain some free software. And with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Carrie. Hey, thank you so much, Jackie. Well, as you mentioned, today I'm going to cover the DNA Star Cloud family of applications. So first of all, I'll just go through a little bit of DNA Star's history and our software. Then I'll get into a little bit more detail about the DNA Star Cloud applications. And then finally, I'll give a live demonstration of DNA Star Cloud desktop, assemblies, and data drive. So this year at DNA Star, we're celebrating our 30th anniversary. DNA Star has been developing software for life scientists since 1984. And in fact, here on this infographic, you can see a picture for, of Dr. Fred Blattner, our founder and president, who launched DNA Star out of the work he was doing in his E. coli genetics labs at the University of Wisconsin. Well, at the time, in 1984, being able to run powerful genetic software on an affordable desktop computer was quite an accomplishment. Throughout our history, we have continued this tradition. We make software that runs effectively on computers that are accessible and affordable. Last year, we made another leap forward by making all DNA Star software fully accessible through cloud technologies. Through the DNA Star Cloud, life scientists can access powerful software no matter what technology they have in their lab. And throughout DNA Star's history, our software has been cited more often than any of our competitors in peer reviewed publications. In fact, we continue the trend of being cited more than twice as often as our nearest competitor. Our next-gen tools support all the various types of projects, as well as all of the sequencing platforms available today. This distinguishes DNA Star software from our competitors or from open source tools. Our software is flexible enough to allow everything from de novo assemblies or reference-guided assemblies to metagenomic workflows. With DNA Star, you get one integrated software package solution to handle all types of sequence data and workflows. Another advantage of DNA Star software is our wealth of resources available to our customers. Right on our website, you will find pre-recorded webinars on a variety of topics available for on-demand viewing. For example, this presentation is being recorded and will be posted shortly after today's webinar. There, on our website, there is also a library of software tutorials available, and you can search by topic or by product to find the information that you're looking for. And on our website, we have over 100 demo videos in our video library. Each video is just a few minutes long, so if you're new to new software or you're starting on a new workflow that you haven't done before, be sure to check out our library of videos to get a jump start on the work that you're doing. And then if you find that you really need to speak with a person, you can find the chat live button on our website and get a hold of somebody for a one-on-one -on -one consultation. DNA Star software suites are oriented around different types of research. For example, the Laser Gene Evolution Suite includes sequence analysis software for such things as performing multiple and pairwise sequence alignments, assembling Sanger sequences, creating virtual clones, 
for designing primers. The Structural Biology Suite offers a robust set of tools for protein sequence analysis, macromolecule visualization, and structure prediction. The foundation of this suite is comprised of Protean 3D and NovaFold, which allows you to predict three-dimensional structures for protein sequences. And finally, the Laser Gene Genomic Suite, which I'll speak to a lot today. This suite keeps it simple by providing all the software you need for next-gen sequence assembly and analysis in a single integrated package. So the DNA Star Cloud family of applications. This is comprised of the DNA Star Cloud desktop, DNA Star Cloud assemblies, and DNA Star Cloud data drive. But first, why are life scientists choosing to use cloud technologies? Well, for one thing, they offer on-demand access to powerful computers. All you really need is a secure internet connection. And this way, you don't need to purchase an expensive computer capable of handling your largest next-gen assemblies. And you don't have to maintain or upgrade such expensive hardware. Cloud-based systems offer the convenience of accessing your data from anywhere. In fact, this remote access is a feature that many collaborative teams find useful. For example, say you wanted to share data with a colleague, but that colleague works at another location. Well, with cloud-based storage, you can share, you can both have access to the data that you need to work on independently. And finally, with the DNA Star Cloud, there are several flexible licensing options in order to get access to LaserGene software. When moving to a cloud-based solution, many people wonder what they can expect with regard to security. And I think that there are some misplaced concerns about cloud-based solutions, because in some ways, cloud-based option can be more secure than others. For example, let's compare the DNA Star Cloud to, say, a laptop computer. With the DNA Star Cloud, all data is password protected and encrypted. Data is encrypted not just when being transferred from one computer to another, but also while it is at rest or being stored. On the other hand, most people don't encrypt data on their personal computers, and a laptop can be easily misplaced or even stolen. The DNA Star Cloud is built upon Amazon Web Services, Amazon's world-class, highly secure data centers offer the state-of-the-art in security, privacy, and uptime. In fact, in May of 2013, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services granted Amazon an agency authority to operate under the Federal Risk and Authorization Management Program. The upshot of this means that government agencies are allowed to use the Amazon platform for their secure data. If you'd like some more information about the DNA Star Cloud security platform, you can download this PDF document at this link here from the dnastar.com website. So getting into a little bit more detail about the DNA Star Cloud desktop. This first application was released last year, and it makes the entire LaserGene suite of applications available through um, a virtual computer. So all you really need is an internet connection, and then you access a virtual computer that's hosted on the Amazon Web Services, and you operate the LaserGene software remotely. New with LaserGene version 12.1 is the ability to run large assembly projects using on-demand computational power. With the increase, increasing file sizes and throughput available with next-gen sequencing technologies, it is often convenient to be able to access the power required for assembling such large projects just when you need it. With the cloud, you don't have to purchase and maintain such a large computer. Instead, you can access the DNA Start Cloud Assemblies application when you need it. With cloud assemblies, you can run as many assemblies as you like. Each assembly runs independently and at the same time. Effectively, 
You can run 10 assemblies just as quickly as you can run a single one. It's like having 10 computers at your command. The DNA Star Cloud data drive is also new with the LaserGene version 12.1. Like with cloud assemblies, the data drive is ideal for managing all of your large next-gen sequence data. You pay only for the storage you need today without worrying about what you're going to need tomorrow or in a year from now. The DNA Star Cloud data drive has been optimized for its job. It transfers and stores large next-gen sequence data. With the data drive, uploading a file to DNA Star Cloud is very fast, much faster than it would be using a standard file transfer using FTP. As I mentioned, the DNA Star Cloud applications are fully integrated with traditional LaserGene software. The diagram here illustrates how the DNA Star Cloud data drive can be used as your central repository for your sequence and assembly data. You can upload your sequence data one time, run your assemblies, and then download the finished assembly files for visualization and analysis on your desktop computer. The data drive can be accessed equally well from your PC or from the DNA Star Cloud desktop application. The DNA Star Cloud applications are fully integrated as part of LaserGene. Here you can see them grouped together on the DNA Star Navigator. The Navigator is central to all LaserGene applications, as this is where, as this is where you would launch the applications from. And furthermore, the DNA Star Cloud Assemblies application is fully integrated within the LaserGene SeekMan engine. Through the engine wizard, you are helped to set up your assembly projects depending on your individual project's needs. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and do a demonstration of these applications. So let's take a look at the first member of the DNA Star Cloud family of applications. As I mentioned, the Cloud Desktop gives you access to all the applications of LaserGene through a web browser. So here you can see I have a web browser window open on my computer, and I have launched the DNA Star Navigator. Here in the Navigator, all of the various LaserGene applications are grouped by the types of projects you might want to do, such as structural biology or next-gen sequencing. I'd just like to point out, as I mentioned, that um, because you have access to all of the LaserGene software, um, whether you're on the cloud or on your desktop, you have access to DNA Star Cloud Assemblies and DNA Star Cloud Data Drive. Well, just to give a little demonstration about how um, using the virtual computer of the DNA Star Cloud desktop is just like using a, your desktop computer. So in here, I've launched Megaline Pro, and I have a new um, untitled project window. So what I'd like to do is really quickly just do some protein sequence alignment. I have some, I'm going to add some ADH protein sequences, and these come from various different species. I have um, the sequence from human, yeast, a couple of mouse species, and a worm. So I can open those protein sequences. I actually uploaded those protein sequences to my cloud desktop using the cloud data drive previously. Really convenient way of moving files to and from the cloud. So here I have those ADH protein sequences in Megaline Pro, and they're currently unaligned. Megaline Pro displays this in, um, two, in a split screen. 
On the bottom, we have the unaligned sequences, a very detailed view. We can see the individual amino acids. And at the top, we have the unaligned view, but from a much higher level, where we can see the whole gene displayed here as these unaligned gray bars of varying lengths. So what I can do is I can align these sequences. I'm going to use the MAFT algorithm. And you can see that very quickly, Megaline Pro was able to align all five sequences. Now you can see that these are all of equal length, and the colors of the aligned portions have turned to green, with the unaligned portions being gapped and still remaining gray. And then at the bottom here, we have this really nice representation with the sequence logos. Um, the sequence logos are proportional to the um, content of those amino acids across all five sequences. These sequence logos were new with the LaserGene version 12.0. Another new feature with LaserGene 12.0 is this ability to zoom in. So I can use these green zoom bars at the top of the screen to get a little bit more detailed look at the sequences that I have here in this window. I've also opened a genomic alignment here in Megaline Pro. So in another project window, I have some helicopylori bacterial genomes that have been aligned using the progressive MAV algorithm. And you can see here, again, we have the split screen. At the top, we have the very high-level view that gives a view across the entire genome. And then at the bottom, we have the detailed view at the individual amino acid level. And in here, I can um, double-click on a block to get these locally collinear blocks aligned within that screen. And again, I can use the zoom to get a much closer look at that area. And you can see that this operates just as quickly, um, very responsive, and is a very similar experience to using it on my regular desktop computer. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and close out of my web browser. And I'm going to go, and now I'm going to be down on my regular desktop computer here on my laptop. And again, I have opened the DNA Star Navigator. And from here, I'm going to launch the DNA Star Cloud Assemblies. Just want to point out here another central part of the DNA Star Navigator. And that is that if you hover over any of these applications, you get a pop-up window with some live links with additional information. For example, here on Megaline Pro, if I hover over that, I get some links to some videos about Megaline Pro, as well as the tutorials and some sample data. <coughs> so I've launched DNA Star Cloud Assemblies, and that will actually bring up Seekman Engine. If you remember, I said that the Assemblies is integrated with the Engine Wizard. <coughs> so this first screen of the Wizard is the same as in LaserGene 12.0, except for now there's this new radio button for Assemblies on the Cloud. When you first get Assemblies on the Cloud, you won't, these boxes here will not be filled out. You need to contact DNA Star directly to get um, your credentials set up to be able to access Assemblies on the Cloud. And then you do need to make a purchase of some Assemblies credits so that you can run those using this software. So I'm going to click. So I've filled this out, and I've checked the checkbox, so I only need to do it this one time. It will save my credentials. And I click Next. And here I get a login message with a little bit of a reminder of how many credits I have left on my account. And I currently have nine assembly credits. So the first time you come into the Cloud Assemblies, you probably want to upload your data ahead of time. It's just a little bit more convenient to do that. So on this screen, the first thing I'm going to do is click the Upload Data button. <coughs> and this brings up the DNA Star Cloud Data Drive. 
Now this might look sort of similar to what you would expect, similar organizational structure to what you would have on your personal computer. So here I have on, in the top window, these are all the files and folders that I've created and uploaded previously. You can see that this column here gives me the type of content that I have. So I have some folders here. You can double click on it to open it. That will take me into the folder that I've called Bacterial. I can use this icon here with the folder icon with the up arrow to go back up a level. So here I am back at the root directory. You can also see that I have some files uploaded. I have some fast queues and a VCF file. Other buttons on the screen that are helpful is the folder icon with the plus symbol that you can use to create a new folder. The red X is for deleting folders and files. You can upload an entire folder at a time using the folder icon with the up arrow, or you can upload individual files. And then when your project is done, or if you just want to retrieve some of the data that you've stored here, you can use this cloud icon with the down arrow to download files back to your desktop computer. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go into a folder, and I'm going to upload some of my data that I want to. Um, this is some Illumina data that I'm going to be assembling. And you can see that as soon as I click OK, the DNA Star Cloud Data Drive creates the folder for me, and then it starts uploading, compressing and uploading the files that I've moved into there. So these, well, it um, compresses the files just to make the movement of the file go faster by moving smaller files, but you don't need to do anything. It just compresses them, takes care of it, um, and you don't need to make do anything differently with these files for your assemblies. So we don't need to sit here and watch this upload. So I'm going to go ahead and close this file, close this window. And this brings me back to that page of the Cloud Assemblies Wizard. And so once you have all your files uploaded the way you want them, you get back to the screen. And then this time, I'm going to select the radio button, New Cloud Assembly, and click Next. And here we have um, the next bunch of options for where we can select our project type. And you can see here that all the same project types are available um, for cloud assemblies as are available in the LaserGene engine wizard. Um, in fact, we have these two new assemblies, our gene panel assemblies from, um, that were available with LaserGene 12.0. We have a new cancer somatic gene panel assembly workflow, as well as a Mendelian or germline gene panel assembly. But today I'm going to be doing multiple bacterial genome assembly. So I'll leave this top radio button selected and click Next. Now as I'm going through the wizard, different options are, I'm making different selections and the wizard is adjusting based on my selections. So here I have a few more options of what I could be doing with my genome assembly. I'm going to be doing a templated assembly today, so I'll leave this top radio button highlighted. And here, um, ask me to set up a project name for the project that I'm going to be doing, and to designate a folder for storing all of the um, completed files. So I'll go ahead and browse. And once again, this is taking me to the directory um, in the DNA Star Cloud data drive. So I'm going to select a folder and click the green checkbox, and then select Next. Now here for template files, there's a nice new addition with the cloud assemblies, 
And that is the ability to automatically select any of these genome template packages that are curated by DNA Star. Um, these are template packages for a wide variety of model organisms, and they include um, some database information already incorporated into the template, like dbSNP information, and then for like the human templates, there's also additional COSMIC and GURP database information incorporated. Um, today, I'm not using one of those templates. I'm going to be using um, an E. coli template that I uploaded to the data drive previously that I obtained from GenBank. So I've got that input, and then I'll click Next. And here we tell the, pro the program about what types of sequence files we're going to be using. Now, I could be using any next-gen sequencing um, files, but today I've got Illumina data. It's paired read. I'm going to add one more here. Again, already stored on my data drive. It's okay to leave the set pair information at the default, or you can make the change if you know. <coughs> set that experiment name, and then I can click Next. And here we have the assembly options. And as I mentioned, the wizard is making optimizations based on all my selections previous to this. So these, these options are really well optimized for the type of project that I'm doing. However, if you find that your um, particular project has some needs and you want to make some optimizations, you can make those changes here. You can also go into the advanced options, and they have some additional settings that you can make some tweaks to if you find that that's helpful for your project. But I'm going to leave the default settings the way they are and go to Next. And here we are on the last page of the Cloud Assemblies wizard. Up at the top here, you can see that I get this message reminding me that I'm going to be using three Cloud Assembly credits. And then the script is written here. So when I'm ready, I can click Assemble, <coughs> and this will automatically start the assembly process in Cloud Assemblies. I'm going to just show you here these six helpful success messages that are displayed. So I've uploaded three E. coli strains, and for each one, there, this information is created. There's a data map and a script and three individual computers are being spun up to run these assemblies in parallel. So they'll all be done at around the same time. And I can watch as they are successfully sent to the virtual computers. And then at the end, I can see entire project was successfully submitted to the DNA Star Cloud. <coughs> and click Next to monitor and manage the cloud assembly. Now at this point, my computer is completely freed up. All the work and assembly is being done on the Amazon Web Services virtual computers, and I can just quit out of this and come back later when my projects are completed. But right now, I think I'll go ahead and take a look at what, how they're progressing. So I click Next, and that brings me to the monitoring screen. And here I can see all the different projects that I've been doing um, if I want to see just what's active right now, here are the three strains that I've sent for assembly. And you can see that the status here um, is at starting. This status will progress through starting, running, finishing. And when it's complete, then it'll say done. This um, window will also track the elapsed time. So it shows the time that I started the assembly. And when it's done, it'll have an end time. But I'm, we don't need to sit here and, and watch those progress, so I'm going to go ahead and find a project that I did earlier in the week. And here's one. And you can see that the status is done. So once I highlight that, a completed assembly, 
then some more buttons become available here in this window. So the first one, um, I can click on View Report to get some important statistics about the assembly. For example, I can find, um, I can see here that the actual assembly time was two minutes, um, while the whole process of moving all the data over to the virtual computer and saving the information back to the data drive might take a little longer. In fact, I think the total elapsed time for this was about 15 or 20 minutes. Um, the actual assembly time was quite speedy. And you can see how many variants were found. There are 291 SNPs found in that assembly. <coughs> I can also view log. <coughs> and the log file can be really helpful, especially if you find that you need um, to speak to somebody and get um, for any customer service reasons. Um, here we can find all the information about what, how the um, assembly was set up. For example, here we can find that I used this template file for my assembly. And if you scroll to the bottom, you can see that the job was finished successfully. So just a helpful tool to have in case you want to check up on what you did previously. The View Data button is helpful for locating all the files that were created from the assembly. So once again, we're popped over to the DNA Star Cloud data drive, only this time we're taken directly into the folder where all the files were created for this particular genome assembly. And then finally, if I want to download one of these files, I can highlight it click download, and I'll be asked, um, DNA Star Cloud Data Drive will direct me to where on my desktop computer do I want to store this file. For um, simplicity, I'll just say my desktop and click OK. And you can see that it instantly starts the status of downloading, and I can watch the progress of that file as it downloads to my desktop. Um, once again, you don't need to be concerned at all with whether or not this file is um, compressed, because when it's downloaded to your desktop, it will automatically be decompressed, and you can treat it just like a regular file. So with that, that pretty much completes the process of getting um, assemblies on the cloud. So with that, I'll quit. And any questions, Jackie? Yeah, hi, Carrie. Before we move on to some of our other applications here, we do have a couple questions on our cloud workflows that we saw today. Uh, a couple of attendees are inquiring as to the security of the DNA Star Cloud. Uh, can you speak to the levels of security here and whether people can feel comfortable uploading and downloading their data? Sure, absolutely. I think the Amazon Web Services is the that upon which the DNA Star Cloud is built is really the highlight of secure platforms. We, um, furthermore, DNA Star Cloud encrypts all of the data, so it's encrypted while it's moving between computers, and it's also encrypted while it's stored. So it's really the um, using the state of the art in security and privacy. Great, thank you. Uh, we also discussed briefly uh, some assembly credits used for these. Uh, we have a couple questions on how these are used and where they can be acquired. Sure, so they can, um, if you reach out to DNA Star via their website or by calling us, you can get those credits purchased in advance of um, accessing the cloud. And it's really very simple. You just buy them as you need them, and then they are um, utilized as you run assemblies on the cloud. Great. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, Jackie. All right. So now we have all, we've done some multiple assemblies, and we've gotten them all created on the cloud. And then I've gone ahead and down, I did five of them earlier this week, and then I downloaded them to my desktop computer so that I can take a look at them using some of my other LaserGene software. So the first thing that I like to do 
is um, open up a new assembly in SeekMan Pro. SeekMan Pro is a powerful tool for working with next-gen data. It provides a great interface for viewing and editing sequences. So something I might do, I, I have one here opened. I have the one contig is a bacterial genome, so it's just the one contig. And I w might like to um, go ahead and open the SNP report. So here we can see um, a really very detailed um, table of information about all the putative SNPs that were found in this assembly. Um, up at the top here, we can see that there were 268 putative SNPs in a total of 262 different positions. Now, if I want to limit what I'm seeing here a little bit, um, maybe I want to um, in increase the quality call or the SNP percent, I can do that. And what I've done is I've clicked filter, and that's brought up this filter dialog here. Um, this is a little bit new with um, LaserGene 12.0. It's very nicely organized, all my filtering in one location. And it is actually um, interactive. So as I make changes here, you can see that these numbers change over here, whereas before I had over 200 putative SNPs. When I've increased some of my filter settings, I've decreased the putative um, SNPs that are called here. So I'll go ahead and close that. Um, another thing that I might want to do is take a look at something like um, just a little bit curious about why this particular SNP was called. So again, with the SeekMan Pro is really nice because it's interactive. I can double click on this and it will take me directly to the alignment view of that particular SNP. So that's really helpful. I can just sort of take a look at what happened there. If I decide that I agree with that, I can go ahead and verify that SNP. So this is what you can do is taking a look at the um, a single assembly project. But, some, but the real power of being able to do multiple assemblies at once is then you have all your samples together. So I'm going to go ahead, I've launched ArraySTAR, and in here I've imported not one, but all five of my E. coli strains, and they're all listed here in my experiment list. And the power of a Ray Star is that I can take a look at some of these um, SNPs, for example, across all five samples. So first thing I might want to do is take a look at the SNP table. And here you can see that I have a column for each one of my samples. And this table can be sorted by in a variety of ways. I can sort by gene name. And I can take a look at individual SNPs here and I can see how those are interpreted across the various samples. And when I highlight, I can get some more information about those. I can make some additions to what's being displayed here in the SNP table. For example, I might want to display a column for the classification of each SNP. And that just brings more information here for quick and easy viewing across all the samples. Another thing that I might want to do is some filtering. So I might want to filter and take a look at some of the variants, maybe in just one sample. And again, I can choose the SNP criteria. And these, these filter criteria should look very familiar. These criteria are harmonized with what we saw in SeekMan Pro. And again, I can make some changes like I only want to look at variants which are nonsense or frame shift, or I might want to make some other changes to maybe the SNP percent. And then click OK, and I can search. And here I find all the SNPs in this particular sample. 
that meet my filter criteria. And if I want to save those SNPs out as a set, I can do so here. And I can click this icon to remember results as a SNP set. Another thing I might want to do is take a look at some of the patterns that we see in the genes across all five of my strains. So I might want to um, click the radio button for genes and take a look at all the genes with variants in at least three of my five experiments. So here I have all five of my E. coli strains. I'm going to take a look at all of them and search. And here we can see that there are 11 genes across all five of my samples that meet these criteria.